What is up, you guys? This is going to serve as the Christmas episode of the No Tracers podcast. Let's go ahead and get into it. If you've been wondering what goes on behind the closed doors of abandoned places, if you want to know the stories of the people who explore the rot and decay, well, this is the podcast you've been looking for. I'd like to welcome you to No Tracers. Hey, what's up, guys? Hope you are excited for Christmas. I hope you guys are planning on exploring this weekend. I feel like a good Christmas Eve slash Christmas morning explore is the best way to celebrate the holiday, especially if you're one of us crazy folk that like exploring abandoned places. But hey, what's up? My name's Kay. I'm known as No Tracers, and I am your host. I'm the host of the podcast, No Tracers. If you guys are tuning in for the first time, what's up? Welcome to the show. This podcast is all about exploring abandoned places and sharing the stories of urban explorers around the world. This week on the podcast, my guest is Skinny Legged Man. He's a St. Louis resident, and he has over 8,000 pins on his map. He's been exploring for about 10 months by the time you're hearing this podcast, and that's a crazy amount of pins for somebody that has only been exploring for like a year. Absolutely insane. His story is crazy, and I cannot wait to share it with you guys. Before we get into the episode, I know it's Christmas time. If you're looking for some uh, ways to kick off 2024... You can pick up one of my photos. You can pick up one of my photography books, some merchandise for the new year. Notracers.com slash shop. Go check it out. Pick up some gear. And speaking of gear, if you're looking for gear for urban exploring, I have made a guide for the best gear that I recommend for urban explorers. You can check the links down in the description if you are interested in checking that stuff out. Thank you guys for supporting the podcast. And lastly, if you do enjoy this episode, please leave a rating and feedback. It helps the podcast grow and it helps us find a bigger audience of amazing listeners just like you. So yeah, be sure to leave that feedback, whether you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you can leave ratings now, which is freaking awesome. So yeah, thank you guys for doing that. Let's go ahead and kick this episode off. Skinny Legged Man, welcome to the show. Please introduce yourself and how long you've been exploring to the No Tracers audience. Uh, I'm Skinny. I've been exploring about 10 months now. So what made you catch the bug? What got you uh, interested in, in exploring abandoned shit? Uh, in high school, we used to go to a pretty classic spot here called Cement Land. And, you know, we used to just go there and smoke and explore. And I didn't know that urban exploring was a thing back then. We kind of just did it for fun. Um, my buddy Rebel kind of showed me the social media side of it at the start of this year. And ever since then, I've just been going out and traveling, meeting people. So tell me this, what was your, like, was, aside from the, the cement place, like, what was your first exploration as, like, I guess an official urban explorer? Like, what was your first, like, actual explorer, if that makes sense? Definitely Jamestown Mall, which, rest in peace, fully demoed now, so. Yeah, I mean, that is the way of what we do, unfortunately. I feel, I was just talking to somebody, like, right before we got on this, uh, this chat, and uh, we were talking about how one of the spots here in Nashville just got beat the fuck up recently, like real trashed. And it was a beautiful mansion. You know, Jeremy Explores, uh, formerly known as Abandoned Nashville, went there. And I think a lot of our videos, you know, like the YouTubers and stuff, the content creators that went there, obviously blew up the spot a little bit by giving it notoriety and giving people a lot of information about the place. And I think that with that came the kids that wanted to come in and just trash the place, you know, and, and it, unfortunately it is kind of a part of what happens. Yeah, that, that really sucks. And it sucks for people like us who just go in to take pictures and look at the stuff, Uh, you know, it gives the urban explorers a bad name because Mm -hmm. the kids also will call themselves that, but they'll completely destroy a place at the same time. So it's kind of really contradictive. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, Talk about where you just came from before you were you hopped on here with me. Uh, you were exploring today, and I love that you came straight from an explorer to chat with me. I appreciate you doing that. So take me into like what happened today, where you went, and uh, kind of what how how it went down. Yeah, today, uh, famous bar. 
um, pretty pretty well known spot in St. Louis for sure. Uh, very wrecked. It's mainly just a rooftop spot. We happened to find uh, what looked like a conference or a meeting room um, and spent like 30 minutes setting up a bunch of old chairs and stuff and tables. And we found like easels with the old redevelopment posters and stuff on it. And we set it all up and took a whole photo shoot. You know, we took a couple pics sitting in the chairs and stuff and had a great time on the roof, too. Uh, I don't know if they're planning on doing anything with it or not soon, but you know, it was just an open door today. So <laughs> well, got to love an open door. I, I, I talked about on my last episode, how we do, we, we like get into these places, like in the most like obscure out of the box, like crazy ways. And oftentimes there's just like the front doors open. Have you experienced that yourself? <laughs> Liter- <laughs> Literally the street side door was just, was just <laughs> open. Just <laughs> You could tell from like a half mile away. That's so great. funny. That's so funny. Uh, can you tell me what your most like ex- extreme entrance or your hardest entrance has ever been to get into a spot or to get out of a spot? Um, there was a Lutheran church uh, like five or six months ago. It was my second time getting in, but it was all sealed up. Uh, I climbed a little bit over two stories up a brick wall um, just by my fingers and, and feet. And the video went around for a while. It was actually pretty cool. My friend recorded it. But, yeah, basically Spider-Man two stories up a brick wall to get into this church. So I mean, shit, you got to do what you got to do, you know? Like, we got to – you trying to get into the spot or you trying not to get into the spot? Like, how – that that's another question for you. Like, where do you draw the line on, like, risk? Like, how far are you willing to go to, like, hit a spot? Uh, I draw it at damaging property. Um, of all the clean and cool and, you know, historic spots I've, I've hit, I've never damaged any part of a a building or anyone's property to get in there. If I can't find a viable entrance, no matter how worth it it is, I'm not going to disrespect someone else's property just to take a couple photos for my own enjoyment, you know? Respect. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you a hundred percent. Um, as far as like gear goes, like what kind of camera are you shooting on? Do you bring anything in with you? Like a backpack? Like if so, what kind of bag are you bringing in lights, any of that kind of stuff? Uh, so I get asked that a lot. I just shoot on a base model iPhone 13. Um, just lightly edit sometimes. Uh, I do usually have a bag. I got respirator mask, uh, a couple lights, I definitely recommend a good light if you're nighttime exploring. They sell some really good ones, like three to 5,000 lumens that will light up an entire theater if you need it to. So that's a recommendation for everybody. Yeah, I think a good light goes a long way. You know, especially a lot of these places, you, you don't know. Even It could be the middle of the day, but it's going to be, it could be dark as hell in there, you know, and I feel like a lot of people underestimate that. And so I, I always recommend, you know, grabbing a light, even if it's from like Home Depot on your way, you know, there's a, plus if you need a respirator, you can also get that at Home Depot. There's a lot you can do without having to go online. And while I do love, you know, I've got like affiliate links in the description of the podcast with like gear recommendations. But honestly, like if you're on the go, like you're not going to be able to Amazon Prime yourself something, you know, you, you, you got to be able to pick something up where you're at. So I, I always recommend like Home Depot to people for, for pretty much any and all Urbex gear that you could possibly need. Oh, for sure. I hear you there. And then uh, have you ever gotten permission to explore a spot? A bunch of times. It's it's not as hard as people think. It's as easy as a Google search and then a phone call or an email. You know, it's it's way better to get permission than risk a cop coming in a building holding you at gunpoint, in my opinion. So, Have you ever had an experience like that, by the way? Like cops or security, like dealing with that kind of stuff? Like, And, and if so, how did you handle that? Uh, I don't deal with it often. There was one time coming out of a church I did get held at gunpoint. Typically, especially around my area, if a cop sees you're just a photographer, you don't have any paint, don't have any tools, they're always cool. And the one that held me at gunpoint actually gave me another bando with the entrance to it to go shoot right afterwards. <laughs> so that was that was actually kind of cool. Shout out Metro Police Department. So. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. He was all down. He was like, I'll meet you there. I'll see you inside. <laughs> 
Yeah, he said he used to do the same stuff with his friends back in the day. So That's crazy, dude. I love that. What a cool, like, you know, random experience that you had. I you know, I've had I've had run ins with security and oftentimes they're like, I'll give you an hour. Or, you know, I, I usually like tip them like 20, 30 bucks, whatever I have on me. I'm like, yo, let, let us hang out for an hour. And they're usually pretty cool about it. Obviously, I'm not trying to bribe the cops, but security guard, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, a little bribe to security goes a long way. I've done that just a few times, but it worked. And, and I got some really good shots because of it. So exactly. I, I definitely understand. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, What was your or what has been your scariest or riskiest exploration? Uh, I was down south doing a really big steel complex and I set off a motion detector in one of the buildings with power and I've never had security look as hard for me as they did at that place. And I got through the whole thing, saw what I needed to snuck past them a couple times while they were looking, but I've just never had them scour buildings with so many different security people before looking for just me because I set off a motion. You know what I mean? It, it was yeah. anxiety the entire time. So. Oh, man. Yeah, like, at that point, you're not even having fun anymore. You're just like, I got. how do I get around this? Like, how do I get out of this? <laughs> exactly, yeah. That's that's exactly what it was, heart pounding the entire yeah. time. All my photos were shaky and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, I have nothing to show for this place that I just explored because I was panicking the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> literally oh my god so i know you've only been doing this for like a, sh- a shorter amount of time but ha- have you ever had an experience that made you like kind of want to take a step back from exploring or like you know take a break for a second like any any situation where you were just like whoa that was like a lot like i gotta chill for a sec uh most definitely um you know when i was way more new than i am now i was a lot more cocky and arrogant which a lot of the newer people are i'm not gonna lie oh yeah and i hope some of the newer people if they're listening they listen to my advice it's not cool to be like that um i hurt a lot of my friends feelings i was disrespecting people without knowing it and that 100 percent. i cleared my page i took a step back for a while you know I, i stopped posting and it sucked that i had to do that but it got me to a point where I matured a little bit when it came to the whole urban exploration side of things. So, yeah, I think you gotta, you know, sometimes you gotta take a step back, especially, you know, if you're, if you're not in the right headspace, I feel like that can have a lot of effect on you as like a a person. And like you said, it, it affected your, your relationships with people. And I, you know, I think taking a step back is probably the right thing to do in that moment. And, you know, it's good that you like worked it out and like figured out your way through that and everything. Um, do, okay, so this question: <laughs> How many pins would you say are on your map? How many spots do you have? Uh, like three weeks ago, I just got over eight thousand pins in my map list. I'm sorry. Did you just say eight thousand pins? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this year, I've been to. A- I think it's just over a thousand that I've seen myself this year. So what? are you, how, how is this possible? Uh, lots of sacrifice, lots of road trips, yeah. lots of networking and friends. Yeah. I definitely didn't do the majority of it alone. I've had a lot of help. I wish I could shout them all out, but <laughs> they know who they are. You know, sure, they, of course. I, I've had a lot of help with what I do. So. Yeah, yeah. How so? How did you make these connections? Was it through like social media? Was it through like running into people at Bandos? Like, how how do you make these connections with these people? Yeah, it was mainly Instagram. Um, as yeah. soon as I switched from TikTok to Instagram, I I met a lot of people. Um, yeah, it's just know, easier once, to once communicate. Got, yeah, of course. Once I got more in tune with the ethics and the morals of the community, you know, right. networking became a lot easier. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean. It, like like I was saying, it's easier to communicate than TikTok because like just DMing people is so much easier on Instagram, I feel, you know, like commenting everything. The whole platform is just it's easier for networking. I feel like TikTok is more like a like a showcase, you know, like I did this crazy thing. Look at this, like it, share it, whatever. But I feel like on Instagram, people are more interactive. And then if you go over to like Facebook, it's just like you post a photo and everyone's like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> literally <laughs> <laughs> fuck you your shit sucks get out of here this is this is not your spot anymore like we're taking this spot like fuck fuck you 
That's so true. It's so Facebook real. sucks, bro. Like, why? I think it's just because it's like, you know, I the the people that are my age are now becoming like the boomers I feel. And so they're like the OG Facebookers. Like, dude, I remember when I got invited to Facebook, like when it was first starting and I was like, this will never last <laughs> it fucking took over. But I feel like that generation, like my generation is now becoming the, like the boomers that are like, you don't know anything about anything, you know? <laughs> exactly. It yeah. You're, it sucks. You're 100% right. It sucks, but it is that's Facebook in a nutshell, you know? And, and on YouTube, everyone's a, a fag basically <laughs> like we can't yeah. get over high school on youtube it's ridiculous anyway so uh tell me what your favorite exploration if you could pick one i know you've done a ton of shit in the past like 10 months but like w- do you have a favorite exploration that you can share um definitely the amusement park that everybody knows i'm not gonna name drop naturally but everybody yeah. knows which one i'm talking about the Did one the that trip on my birthday nice, with some nice. good friends and it was an insane explorer i'd never done anything like it and if you know what i'm talking about i recommend you go i, I just have to say that i have to recommend it to people it's a it's an amazing spot it, everybody deserves to see it so so are you talk? sorry just just for a little bit of clarification are you talking about the southern amusement park or the northeastern amusement park because there are two that are very definitely well-known. north northeastern for sure definitely okay northeastern, got it okay so. understood understood i'm with you now okay we got it all right so you just had to like clarify the region that it's in but i know I exactly you, what you're yeah. talking about because i was like well is he talking about this one or the other one but yeah gotcha <laughs> <laughs> thank you for like that tiny bit of clarification um what's the farthest you've gone to go exploring uh once again the amusement park it was right. <laughs> about a 12 12 hour drive from me so got you okay so what's the farthest you would go like what's your farthest pin away from your location that you would go to uh springtime i definitely really want to drive my car up to maine and make my Ooh. way back all the way through the east coast uh, and yeah. hit everything possible in a couple weeks so very cool that's i mean that's like i think my only state i haven't been to is maine i think that's the only one i think i've done every other state not for urbex just like in life you know i i tour with bands i'm in a band so like i travel the country a lot but nobody ever goes to maine no one goes to maine so it's like i just haven't been there i've been to alaska several times for shows and for you know i'm a freelance videographer as well so been up there like twice this past year and you know i've gone before but yeah Maine just it's just not it hasn't been in my in my list it just hasn't been you know so I don't I don't know I don't know much up there but I'm always down to go to Maine I heard it I heard it's a lot of low-key exploration uh, so I figured starting all the way at the top and yeah. making my way back through would be the best bet hey not a bad idea do you have anything uh pinned internationally uh yeah I got a I want to say a little over a hundred things all okay. throughout Europe in that area, but other sure. than that, not really just here in Europe. Gotcha. 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 Um, what do you do when you're not exploring abandoned places? Like what, what's your like normal life? <laughs> uh, definitely work. Um, I drift as well. Uh, I took a break from that this year to really focus on the exploring and stuff, but I'll be back to that next year. So wait, you drift like cars? Yeah, yeah, I have a drift car myself. Fuck yeah, that's awesome, dude. Very cool. Very, very cool. Do you have a preference on exploring alone versus with people? 100% with people. Um, You know, checking out a spot and scoping alone is always a better bet, but when I actually go do the exploration, I always like to include my friends in some way. It's always a better time. Um, Yeah. It's just, it gets boring when you're alone sitting there clicking the camera button, yeah. And it's a lot more sketchy too. Oh yeah, hundred percent. hundred percent. You're just again in that like constant state of like, is something gonna happen? If I fall through this floor right now, nobody's gonna know. <laughs> I'm fucked. For real. <laughs> I'm fucked. Oh my god. Okay, so uh part of the podcast I started adding on is I have my guest ask the next guest a question. So I've got some questions from other people that have been on the show that I would like to ask you now. So uh TW Visions wants to know what your craziest escape has been. Oh, definitely. Definitely that that uh, complex I was talking about down south. That was 
it was it was difficult trying to get all my shots and evade all the flashlights and multiple security trucks the whole time. So, but you you got out unscathed, didn't get caught. Yeah, that's ne- awesome. Never got caught. Uh, okay. I actually flew down there to pick up a truck and drove my buddy's truck all the way back home afterwards. So <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's amazing. All right, so um, Earth's unknown places. His question is: What is the weirdest thing you've seen while exploring? Oh man, blood. There's yeah, been blood always, in a couple places. That's always pretty fucking gruesome. Yeah. I I uh I've definitely been there as well. I feel like we've all kind of experienced some of that stuff. You know, I've had a few guests on the podcast that have seen dead people, you know, just bodies, and I'm like, Duh, that's that's a lot for me. That's a lot for me to like wrap my head around." And like It's a real the, thing though. It, oh, for sure. For sure. You're like away from the world when you go in these places, you know, it's like we walk into these places and the world shuts out around you. Like, of course people are going to die or get killed in these places. You know what I mean? Like we are walking into some really fucking dark places. Exactly. Yeah. We don't know what's going on in there. Exactly. So, uh, exploring with nomad, his question is, do you have any good luck charms? Like, do you have something that you bring with you to every bando aside from like your camera or your phone? You know, like, do you have like anything that you bring that is like a, like a good luck charm? Yeah. I try to always wear my air forces. My really, my really beat up pair of forces. I've been wearing them ever since I started and they've been on like every trip and I've had nothing but good luck with them so far. So I haven't given them up and tossed them in the trash yet. Nice. I love that. I love that you have like your thing. You got to keep those until they are literally falling apart at the seams. Like <laughs> your toes are busting through kind of shit. <laughs> That's the plan. Yeah. I'm going to run yeah. them until they can't be ran no more. Absolutely. I love that. And um, so my my next question is like, do you have a favorite history of a place that you've been to? A lot of these places have some like either dark history or like crazy weird history. Like, do you have a spot that you can like talk about and share uh, the history about? Um, definitely Cleveland. Um, yes. Cleveland high school here. Yes. Mainly because so many of my friends, older family and ex coworkers, so many of them graduated from that school. Yeah. It, it wasn't always the rundown, you know, pe- homeless people living in it. It was right. a beautiful school once, just like Cooley. You know, yep. same architect. All the schools like that, I think William Itner was his name. All of those schools yeah. were once super beautiful. So so Cleveland's the one that stands out for sure. The history alone behind it, how old it is, all of the stories I've been told by people in their 50s, 60s, yeah. oh, and older. You know, it's, it's definitely something if you stop through St. Louis, a classic spot before it gets renovated i heard it's going to be apartments or something soon i believe so which is like a wild thing to think about you know the history of that place and like where it came from and like what are your thoughts about places being renovated and and saved and like that kind of thing i think if it gets renovated to serve the same purpose then it's a little more okay than like St. Louis turns every bando school that they buy into apartments for some reason. We don't need <laughs> yeah. living structures. We need educational facilities for the city. You know, that's so true. So, yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. That's I feel definitely like, where I see that. Yeah. I feel like uh, a lot of places also demo places and turn them into like parking lots. Like what the fuck are you doing? Like what? Literally just a parking lot to make money. Yeah. That's all it becomes. I'm like, yeah. are you kidding me, man? Like, so, okay. Here's another question for you. Like what, what place that you've explored would you renovate? Like, given like there's no limit on like funds, if you could renovate one place, what would what would that place be? Oh man, probably an old courthouse that everybody's gonna know what I'm talking about. It's it's beautiful inside, even with the decay. Um, yeah. I can't imagine what it was like in its prime when it's all shiny and no paint chipping. It, it had to have been gorgeous in there, I'm sure. Yeah, one one thing I want to do one day is find the architect to some of these like extravagant places that I've been to and like explore it with them as it is now. Like what do you think about what what this place has turned into? That that idea to me is just so fascinating. You know, cuz like somebody built that with their hands. 
and now it's decaying. And then going through it with them. Yeah, yeah. I totally get what you're saying. And Having like them interview explain them. Like, oh, why dude. and all that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. why'd you build this like that? Like, why does it? Why is the staircase spiral with a star at the bottom? Like, you know, it's like I gotta know like what they were thinking when they built this, and just to like see their face and like them talk about how they feel about their place they built being like abandoned now, dude. It would just be like the wildest shit. I got to do it. I got to oh, make it happen. Sure. Oh, yeah. I gotta 100%. Make it happen. So if you could live in one bando that you've explored for an entire week comfortably, which place would it be? Oh, man, that's a hard one. Um, oh, that's so hard. Um, I don't know if I could because a lot of the stuff I do, even even when I post the nice spots, there's always the spots that make you not want to be in there, too, you know? <laughs> Yeah. I don't know if I can pick one place that I would I would do that with, to be honest. <laughs> hey, that's fair. That's fair. Because um, you never know. Demo yeah. could come and it could get knocked down on top <laughs> of you. You got no clue. So. <laughs> so true. I had a buddy that just explored a spot that was an active demo. And he was like, I'm going to run through this place. And I'm like, you're a psychopath. But all right. Go for it. I just did the same thing with my buddy Brent, so I totally fuck? understand what is where, wrong where with you. From. That's insane. That's insane, <laughs> dog. I can't, I can't wrap my head around it, man. I'm like, you want to go in the what? You know, there's like explosives in here and shit. Are you crazy? <laughs> but I guess we are all a little bit crazy, huh? To do this. <laughs> I think anybody that does it, yeah, got a, at least one screw loose up oh, there. Oh, for sure. So. Knowing what you know about, you know, evading people and hiding and like getting around security and things like that and navigating these abandoned places with like little to no light, how long would you give yourself to survive in the zombie apocalypse? I think I'd fare pretty well. <laughs> All I right. Think, let's go. I think I. I think I'd be like one of the main characters from like Let's Walking go. Dead that lasts, but <laughs> yeah. I, I'd die eventually. You know, I mean, nobody's gonna survive the whole thing. There's no, there, there's no zombie film where somebody like outlasts the zombie. You know what I mean? Like we all die in the end. <laughs> That's the moral. I th- yeah, I think I'd fare decent though for a little Love while that. at least. Love that. Love that. Um, so, what do you hope for the future of urban exploring? Um, I hope that a lot of the newer people wise up a little more like I did you know yeah. it's it, it's a cool hobby it's fun I get it people take it serious whatever else but at the end of the day it's all about respect we all have the same respect and morals about it so I, I just hope that the a lot of the younger people and the newer people such as me kind of get the same mindset about it you know mm-hmm. and it doesn't turn into something much more than it is so yeah. I love that, man. Yeah, I agree with you completely. I think respect is something that needs to be passed down to this new group of kids that are coming up into the the scene, if you will. I think that somewhere along the way that got lost. I don't know if it's because of the drama in the community or what, but like, I think, you know, like I started this podcast to bring the community together and, you know, bring people together and like uh, under this common thing that we all love, you know? So I I think that that respect needs to be passed down for sure. Um, So last question for you. What is something you know now that you wish you knew when you started exploring? Can't post everything, especially if you have a large social media following. Mm. The likes are cool. The Mm. attention is great. But you're not just ruining the spot for other people. You're not just getting it trashed and ruining people's photos. All of these places are owned. All of them have an owner. On, yeah. Unless they died on the off chance. Sometimes there's a rare occasion. Yeah. But all, all of them, somebody cares about. Whether it's mm-hmm. us or whose name is on the deed. So, you just, you can't post everything. And that's, yeah, it's definitely something I wish I would have known. Because I used to overpost way too many spots and got a couple of them ruined myself. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we've all kind of been there and, and kind of, uh, I guess, fallen fall into that side you know I, th- I think we all have a part to play in this and you know if you want to keep a spot protected you can't tell everyone about it unfortunately that's just what it is if you want to keep these places safe and you want to keep them in the in the most pristine condition as possible you can't post about all of them especially like don't drop the fucking name of the place you know i feel like a lot of people yeah, are just a- out here like i went to the fucking whatever you know like come on 
like you can say like this was a cool church but you don't have to say like where the church like the street corners like don't give me the coordinates <laughs> for real yeah it's just yeah. it's it's uh bad, bad ethics and morals on a lot mm-hmm. of people's part so absolutely man well hey thank you for coming on here if people want to keep following your journey into decay let them know where they can find you online drop your social media for me uh just at skinny legged man I, I mainly just use instagram for real i don't use much else so if you want to look at my stuff you can find me on there All right, y'all, that was my episode with Skinny Legged Man. You can go check him out on Instagram. I put his link down in the description for you guys. If you enjoyed this episode, which I hope you did, please let me know by leaving a rating and feedback on the show. You can hit me up on Instagram or Twitter at No Tracers. And let me know what you thought of the show. Let me know who you think I should have on the next episode. And hey, if you want to come on No Tracers, hit me up, slide into my DMs. Let's chat. Let's get you on the schedule. I would love to share your stories with my audience here. Thank you guys for listening. I so appreciate you guys tuning in every week. And hey, Merry fucking Christmas. Merry Christmas, guys. Hope you have an awesome explore this weekend. Go hit some spots on Christmas. Don't get too cold. Bundle up. I'll talk to you guys next Friday. Enjoy. Stay strong. Keep enduring. Go out. Go explore something. And remember, leave no trace. 